allow me to ask you a question. Are you a real gamer? Are you used to stacking your plate so high that the tower leans out of the sink only for you to clean it when the patch of mold that started to grow at the bottom has inched its way to the tower's top? Are you easily entertained by having your screen covered in so many colors that every cell in your body considers the fact that you might be poisoned? Or perhaps you're trying to develop epilepsy? Finally, are you comfortable with the central heating of your home becoming obsolete to your gaming computer that you haven't shut down in months? If any of your answers to this question is yes, then do I have the game for you? Balloons Tower Def Path of Exile Sorry, bit of a slip there. Risk of Rain 2 is a fun and immersive game, allowing you to immerse yourself inside Goku's time chamber and watch as hours of your life fly by without you knowing about it. You'll get special abilities such as being able to turn a sunset into a rise just by looking outside. What's that? Is your girlfriend mad at you for spending too much time on the computer? What but it's only been 2 runs? Check again, each one of them has taken upwards of 90 minutes. But who am I kidding? You want to be alone to begin with, because one singular second of interruption, and you might be dead. You don't have time for that. And if she's not around to farm currency on your main account while you're playing some other game, then why keep her? So what do you do in this incredible amazing game? Well, as the developer would put it, you fight some wacky monsters, pick up some wacky items, and repeat that until you win. It's a silly little game for you to have fun. Well, let's see if that's the case. The developer might not be wrong, but that's like saying a gourmet meal is only good if you're hungry. It's a bit more than that, might I add, a bit more convoluted. This game is like that slice of pizza that you get to have at 2am with your buddies when all of you are drunk enough to slur your words. Whenever the game isn't turning your experience into a powerpoint presentation, it is one of the greatest experiences you could possibly ask for. It maintains a satisfying gameplay loop that encourages you to keep going and push its limits as much as possible. And it does so while blasting your ears with this electronic vaporwave type music in a mix that I can only describe as mesmerizing. It allows you to completely live out that power fantasy where you become a one-man army, a self-propelled demigod if you will, and it keeps your zooming neurons firing so often that you don't even realize you're starting to sweat from the heat in your moist room. There is no greater feeling than seeing a giant group of enemies approach you only for you to shoot once and then proceed to watch as all of the enemies spontaneously combust in a magnificent chain reaction, which leaves you with a colorful screen, a frame rate of 2 and a few thousand more coins in the bank. Because to fund your violence, you need to enact your violence. Getting money is essential in this game. You don't have enough money for that item that you want to get? No problem. Sacrifice your soul to the altar for cash. Then, instead of grabbing that item, gamble it all away. And then proceed to promptly lose it. Now, once you have some items, you will start to notice something. Your own hit effects trigger your other own hit effects. That's very good, but how do we maximize this? Mods. A copious amount of mods. Quite a significant amount of mods. Mods are fantastic, because they allow you to do everything, but they mainly act like a multiplier to the original game. Is the game too easy now that you know how to play it? No problem! Just crank that sucker up and now it's balanced again. You have mods to balance your other mods, and make it so that your overpowered mods are now a daily necessity. Once you get into the modded hole, I'm sorry, but you're not getting out. And your runs will get significantly longer once you know your way around them. The mods add pretty much anything that you want, items, more enemies, new characters to play. These might be a bit questionable, but who's to say what's wrong or right? 
Expanding the cast of main characters from 13 to a number that won't fit the original display section is a completely normal and understandable thing to do. I'll quick fire the main cast in the order of their slots. We currently have the Commando, which fills his enemies with bullets, quite a considerable amount of bullets, and has a dodge roll. The Huntress, which can shoot while sprinting, and upon enough runs will turn off that part of your brain that is actually used to aim at enemies. What do you mean I need to aim? The Bandit, which too many of my friends play for some reason, and able to turn invisible and shove a knife down your back, which also does quite a bit of damage. The Robot, which nobody ever plays. The Engineer, which turns himself and his allies immortal with the power of mushrooms. The Artificer, which turns resistant enemies into resistant memories, and also, by default, runs about as fast as a stork wearing crocs. The Mercenary, makes you forget how to dodge by having you turn invincible for more time than you're actually not invincible. This thing, which is really hard to unlock, the Loader, which punches through his enemies and accidentally off the map, which is fine because he also takes no fall damage. The Acrid, which gives everybody swine flu or the coronavirus depending on your selection of abilities. The Captain, which will unfortunately nuke both your friends and your enemies from orbit, since who the hell pays attention to one circle for 20 seconds. The Railgunner, formerly known as the Sniper, whose whole self-esteem relies on being able to do that one mission where they get 30 headshots in a row. And the thing from the Void, which is quite weird. All of these characters are well acquainted with solving the problem of life, adding their own colorful solution to the mix. Just try to keep it simple when you start using the mods, okay? Now you are acquainted with the game enough to try and finish your first run. How do you do that? Some people will have you believe that killing the final boss is the end of a run. You know what I call those people? Weaklings. You know when a real run ends? When you can no longer physically tell friend from foe when your screen is an indistinguishable mess that updates every other minute and the only thing that you can hear is the sound of your damage over time effects hitting 200 enemies at once and slowly turning them into dust. Then the silence is broken by a random laser hitting you across the map and killing you instantly, leaving you to bask in the remains of the song that is still playing in the background and the beautiful score of yours, which probably has too many zeros to it. That is when you have truly won. And you know what's the best part of it all? It's only been one and a half hours of your life, and you can get to do it all over again. Because it doesn't matter how long it usually takes, if it means that within the next few hours you will be back to that point in time when your dopamine was surging from the carnage unfolding before your eyes. And now I have to ask, who is the real monster here? If the carnage is too much for you to bear by yourself, then I advise you towards multiplayer. The fact that your computer might not be able to bear the burden of calculating 20 stacks of bleed on 100 enemies at once is not an issue, because that friend that prouds himself upon having a NASA computer will be the one legally required to hold the server. And once their game starts crashing, they're gonna start getting really quiet. My advice for maximum optimized lag? Play simulacrums. In simulacrums, all enemies come to you, and you don't have to share loot with anyone, because everybody gets their own drop, meaning you can all collectively proc a 20% bounce lining effect that will jump between 10 enemies at once. Okay now, is there any story? There might be, but it would be on the same level that the Dark Souls story might be. Mainly. Nobody is exactly going to tell you unless you're looking for one, and even if you found one, you're not sure if it exists or if the voices in your head are convincing you that it does. So instead of making one up, I'll focus on something more real instead. While I am a sucker for good stories, I'm very grateful that there are indie game developers out there making games which have a gameplay first focus. This is because these kinds of games fit a very specific niche that I like to call comfort games. This is the kind of game that you retreat back to whenever there isn't anything else to play, knowing that picking it up and playing it for an hour or two doesn't really require a specific mindset or state. 
For example, it's much easier to get in and start shooting some monsters than it is for me to get into an intricate puzzle game or a lengthy book. It doesn't complicate itself in big save files or stories with lots of characters, which you'll eventually forget the details of. As such, it doesn't need to be played in frequent sittings. Instead, you can just turn off your brain and have fun once in a while, provided that you expect that while to extend itself a bit more than you originally wanted. The base game has an affordable price, and while I do consider the DLC to be a bit of an expensive purchase since it rivals the cost of the original game, it does add quite a bit of content to spice up your runs, effectively almost doubling the item choices in the game and adding some nice side areas that I truly found enjoyable. I rate this game at 50 gasolines over 10 ignition tanks.